I'm Lauren from Lumen Christ College in Derry. Lauren, so in pool chemistry, what's that all about? Well, basically it's looking at uh, pool water needs to be really clean and maintain a safe standard for people swimming in it. And of course, people bring in bacteria and germs to the pool as they're coming in and out. And we're looking at the disinfectant that they use in the pool to clean out the water is chlorine in the form of calcium hypochlorite and sodium hypochlorite. And it's basically looking at factors that break this down, like what influences it, how fast does it break down, and is pool water really clean. So I suppose the important thing there is, as it breaks down, it's not doing its job any longer? Yeah. So we basically did a range of experiments, investigating eight different factors that break down, each leading on to the next. And it was basically just an investigation and it just sort of built on itself. It was only supposed to be two or three experiments, but we ended up doing eight because we kept looking into different things. So tell me what you found then. Well, so our first experiment was the concentration of the hypochlorite ions in bleach compared to bleach solution. We used bleach solution because we couldn't use actual swimming pool water. So the higher the concentration of bleach, the higher the amount of hypochlorite ions in the water, which obviously means that it's cleaner. And then because we thought about swimming pools and what actually surrounds a swimming pool. So sunlight shining through the glass. And we left test tubes out for five days in sunlight. And on day one, they were at their highest. And then we noticed that seven days later, they depleted a lot, the ions depleted quite a bit. So that because we did sunlight, we went on to look at colors and wavelengths. Like, was it actually a certain color in the prism of light that broke down the, the ions so we went on to look at the wavelength so we found that the clear obviously broke it down the most because that has all the colors in it uh, but we looked at the individual colors then and the, they had not much change they didn't change really at all but the one that changed the most was blue and we thought why was this why this certain color and it's because we found out that blue is the closest in wavelength to uv light which led on to the next experiment which was the effect of uv light on the hypochlorite concentration and we found that when we shone UV light through a test tube onto the, the bleach solution there wasn't actually any change and we thought well how could that have happened when we had already broken it down before and it's because we discovered that UV light doesn't travel through glass so we exposed it completely to the UV light and we noticed a, like a definitely noticeable depletion in the ions and then we thought, what about people that have outdoor swimming pools? Because this isn't going to this is going to affect them more than council pools. So we found this cyanuric acid, which basically stops the depletion completely of the ions. I mean, you can maintain the pool for longer without having to clean it. And the cyanuric acid basically absorbs the sunlight, absorbs the rays from the sun. And um, we thought, what else? Swimming pools are usually in hotter countries. So we looked at the temperature and we got a funny set of experiments here. It sort of went down, which we expected, but then at 60 degrees it rose back up again. And we thought this was strange, so we repeated it again and it was the same. Even the, all the averages were the same. So we thought, what might have happened there? And then we thought, well, the pH is changing as the water's evaporating off the surface, causing the change in the concentration. So we test the pH and we noticed 60 definitely had a different change. So then our seventh experiment was the effect of pH on the ions. And so we got different solutions, all of different pHs, and we tested them. And we found out that the best one was between 7.2 and 7.8. And this was because uh, it's not too acidic and it's not too alkaline because both can irritate the skin and be uncomfortable and can sting their eyes in the pool. So usually swimming pools are kept about 7.4. And then the last experiment we did was on urea and swimming pools. We thought it was a common factor. And urea is found in urine and sweat. And it causes a really fast, noticeable depletion of the ions. So we thought, why did this happen? And we looked into it and we found it was the ammonia in the urea that mixed with the hypochlorous acid, causing chloramines, which are really dangerous and unsanitary in the pool. So basically we just did this range of experiments and we thought, well, it's for it's not really relating to council pools. So our experiments were basically to help people that didn't really know how to keep their own pools in their homes. And it affects a lot of like 
bathing water, like even in the home, like how sanitary is your water at the home. So that's basically it. This obviously has commercial implications, you know, for pools and for people putting uh, stuff in their pools. Have you thought anything about that? No, we're basically just looking at do they know how clean the water is before they go into the pool? Like, do they understand? Because the strong smell that you smell in the swimming pool isn't actually chlorine, it's the urea mixing with it. So people think, like, people are getting the wrong perception of things in the pool, they're given the wrong perception. It's just sort of break it down for them. I would have thought that this would be something that uh, commercial companies would have been very interested in. Yeah, they should because, like, well, obviously, like community pools, they have technicians that look at, like, they monitor this. But really, I should really help. Is this your first time at the BT Young Scientist? In my first year, yeah. What, what do you think of the whole thing? That's great. Yeah. Really enjoying it. How important is it, do you think, for somebody to study STEM subjects at school? It's really important. It's going to give you wider career prospects and everything. Like, and it's really fun too. Like, I really enjoy coming down. It's, it's good. Or do you think once you leave school, you'll continue in that area? Will you carry on into STEM-related career, maybe? Hopefully, with something in chemistry, maybe. Well, good luck. It's a massive amount of work and I wish you the very best. Thank you. Thank you.